Hey everybody, Tom here with Hidden Beats, and today we are talking with Amanda from Ava Underwear. How are you doing? What's up? Good man. How are you? Pretty good. It's the end of my my official work day shortly, so that's nice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh end of the day stuff is always a welcome relief. Mm-hmm. So we're here to talk about you, about the band, about your music. But for those who are new, can you give a little intro about yourself? Yeah. Um, so first of all, I'll just talk to you about my little split personality because that's most people's questions are like, wait, <laughs> is your name Amanda or is your name Eva? Because it's for me under fire, but I don't know. Right. So uh, long and short is um, I have a, uh, a music thing that I do. Most of the time um, fans have asked if I'm Eva when I go and meet them at the merch booth. And so eventually the short answer was just yes. Um, but my, my name is Amanda and I'm also a psychotherapist. Okay. So all of my professional stuff is kind of kept. Yeah, I, I sort of use it now to keep two separate zones. Um, so I, I answered anything. I answered to Eva. I answered to Amanda. I answered to Hey You. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, Eva originally started as a song reference. And so it just kind of picked up speed from there. But um, we're really excited. We've got some really cool stuff coming up. Um, we just released a deluxe album. We're getting ready to go on a huge tour. Uh, we're going to play with Bush and Bad Wolves, which is mm. insane. Um, and then we get home and we start writing album two. So if you're new, you're catching us at a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. So how did the book get uh, in the beginning? Oh, I'm sorry. You broke up just there. What was it? How how did the, the band form as a, as a band when we started? Oh, yeah. We have a pretty old school story. So all of us were playing in the bar scene as teenagers in different projects. And then um, years later, we all kind of, you know, wound up trying to do the real adult thing. You know, we all had jobs and different, you know, went to college uh, and then and then we weren't doing much, but we missed it. You know, so I got a phone call from my buddy. He was like, look, let's just jam. You know, we should we should write, you know, like old times he said sure um and we immediately fell back in love with it we were mm -hmm. like let's just let's see how far we can take this so we'll give it just one more shot and landed a record deal i mean you can't go wrong with that right which is pretty awesome right i mean it's just uh it, it with better noise nonetheless which is like that's what they do is rock music right mm -hmm. so it was just it was kind of the perfect blend um we weathered a complete disaster together right which we we got our record deal we wrote album one so excited to release it in march of 2020 and then <laughs> the world shut down yep so i mean we've been through a lot together you know so we're i'm just we're so excited to be out here and um continuing to do to do this you know i mean we were one of the first ones back on the road uh in 2021 we went out with buck cherry no less mm -hmm. and uh and it was so funny because we, we kind of felt like we were the frontier. We were we were the first ones back in a weird world, you know. Um, but now everything feels great. Fans are back. You know, the rock the rock concert is alive and well. So we're happy. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, who who are your some of your inspirations that you kind of draw from when we put time together? We have a lot. Um, we have so many different things, right? So, like, man. Uh, well, our lead guitar player, Rob, started uh, playing guitar because of Metallica, right? So there's one. Mm -hmm. um, I came from like a 90s era background. So I loved trying to sing along to like Christina Aguilera and uh, okay. Alicia Keys vocally, right? But like, I couldn't keep up because I have a, I, just talking to me, I have a naturally lower range. Mm -hmm. um, so I started singing along to rock music because it was very heavily male vocal, right? So I singing along to Breaking Benjamin and um gosh who else was on there so many I didn't come on the scene until like new metal um okay. I didn't think I was cool enough for rock and roll back then <laughs> I was like <laughs> a little nerdy kid yeah yeah clearly I had big glasses and, um so I just I didn't I didn't know uh but it turns out I am cool enough for rock music and now I get to tour all over the world which is pretty cool very validating 100 um, percent yeah. And then um, my rhythm guitar player and uh, a couple of the other guys are all like, you know, very influenced by like Deftones. And, um, they were like 90s grunge era. Right. So like Nirvana and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so we kind of have like all over the map. No, and it makes a good song. That's that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's cool when we all get to kind of writing. Right. Because we still um, I mentioned that we're all from the same area and we all still 
pretty much live in the same area. Our jam space is my garage. So we're still a garage band um, and we get together and we just jam, you know, so it, it does kind of come out when we can just sort of um, when we get to working together on, on writing with new, new material, um, you hear all kinds of different influences, which is which is why I think historically our, our music's been a little all over the map. Mm hmm. Now, talking about your music, we have the deluxe album release. Can you give us some insight of how that came about? Yeah, um, this was clearly a COVID era album. And so releasing all of the music was very difficult and had a lot of like hangups because we didn't know when we could tour to support it and what people would gravitate to. So it was a very long album cycle and we just like uh, we hadn't used some of the other songs that we had written from before, um, whether that was cover songs or like different versions of the original songs. Um, a couple of them were uh, some like B-sides that no one had heard from us before. And so we weren't quite ready for album two yet, but album one had already gotten released. And so we were like, We'll just throw everything on a deluxe album. We should we should give the people everything that we've mm -hmm. you know in that way. We get a little longevity out of it. We had some new cool features on some of the songs, so it was it was a really fun way to kind of bridge the gap between album one and two after having this like weird COVID release. Um, so I guess that was kind of the the idea behind it. Was there any of the newer stuff that you were excited for people to hear? Kind of oh, I hope they're gonna love this kind of thing. Um, you know, it's interesting you say that. I I mean, so the Unstoppable uh, song with Corey Marks kind of came about as uh, like a last minute idea, but it made so much sense when um, when we kind of brought it to fruition. He is outlaw country. Mm -hmm. And that song has a very swing attitude, you know, so I just think that it was so and then we got to do the music video together, which was well, probably the most fun I've ever had. He's a, a riot of a person. Just it was immediately like a total hang. Yeah. So it was really fun to just get to know. Like we were just like, did we just become best friends? Like it was one of those, <laughs> like a very, you know, uh, one of those sort of special moments, step brothers moments. Um, but so that that was fun. I was really excited to to for people to hear that version with him on it, um, and then. You know, Comatose has always been one of my favorites. And so we put Deluxe Album on there that was just like my vocal only. And that was fun for me too, because I feel like that one was the most authentically written in the studio. We all came to together with like no previously recorded anything. And we just very organically wrote a song that was super powerful right there in session. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was kind of excited for, for that to come to light as well. Um, and uh, some of it had like, my favorite grit vocals that I had done were like layered in there. And so I was very excited about that. Um, and then maybe the other one was uh, we have a cover of Come Undone, which is kind of a super oddball left field Duran Duran cover. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, people are super into covers right now. I think there's a lot of people who are doing all of the like self-release stuff is all yeah. um, different rock versions of other songs that you wouldn't expect. And so I was hoping that maybe, um, you know, I, I haven't really started to push that around yet on the Internet. But I think when we do, um, people will really respond well to it. It's, it was really a fun one for me to sing also. So, yeah, it's fun making something your own that has already been in someone's life. And then they're like, wait a minute, that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's kind of like from an era too, where I think many, maybe a lot of our fan base will have recognized the lyrics once the chorus hits, but it will be new to a lot of these, like, I don't think many younger generation people would, would really know what that song is. So I think it's kind of a cool blend of this is not a very obvious cover. Um, and yet something that I had a lot of fun singing. Now, how do you think your music has evolved over time? I mean, you started off garage band and then you got a record deal and kind of just moved on from that. how how have things grown i mean we definitely have never shied away from very much i guess we, we we've never shied away from production value i think there's a lot more production value in our stuff now um which just sort of keeps up with the times and i think it adds a lot of attitude ambiance character like there's something that adds to the vibe when you start putting in you know 
um, keys and different like synth pattern stuff and like heartbeat type stuff. And I love the way that like bring me the horizon is amazing at that. Right. Like mm -hmm. that's very much a, um, a new era thing, I think. Um, but there's, there's also some other ways I think that we've elevated a lot of our, our vocal melodies. Um, I've gotten, I think a lot more writing under my belt now. I think that's evident, um, when we come to the table, uh, with new music. So I, I think those are probably two of the most obvious ways. I think one of the ways that we have not abandoned, that's also pretty cool is like, you're always going to hear guitar solos in our songs because mm -hmm. like we're a rock band. And I think that's pretty quintessential rock band moment. And like Rob's playing is, uh, you can't skip that. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's um, other things that are like staples that we've not left behind. And then there's other things where I feel, I feel like we've grown quite a bit. And it's nice to see, you know, from an early on to it and how the growth goes because everyone evolves with your music with you. So it makes more, more fun that way. Yeah, I think so. You know what? Streaming has been pretty cool for it, as far as like what people will listen to as well. I've always said that I think our music has enough variety where it could wind up on whatever playlist. And that's mm -hmm. pretty fun, too. I feel like there's always going to be something for the listener with our catalog. Now, I mean, speaking of streaming, how, what do you think of the music scene right now? We're we're in the digital age and everything is so readily available to everyone. How do you how do you see the scene right now? I mean, I think the scene is strong, honestly. I think that the attitude is strong. I think that people are back for like music and rock and roll and like festivals. And like when I'm in real life on the ground with people, it's it's what I love, you know? I, and I think there's so much excitement about new artists too. I mean, I, I see Youngblood coming up. I see Mothika coming up. I see, you know, there's like some old pop influence or some like throwbacks to like punk in some of these, in some of these new you know, artists. Um, and it, it, it creates a, a cool space for us to, to evolve also. Um, what I hate though, is the algorithm. Mm. <laughs> yep. I just, why? Like this is in no way does it indicate what people are liking and what they're listening to. I mean, I guess clicks and likes and whatever, but, but the algorithm kind of like, I guess, misses that because you, then mm. you could you could not hear something that's amazing because it just didn't have enough right you didn't upload it at 6 p.m where <laughs> everybody's gonna see it you know yep. what i mean like i just don't you could miss something and i just i hate that i hate that the algorithm is like ah give us ad dollars and we'll we'll send it to people no you have to you know why can't if i've got x number of people on my page how come that same X number of people don't see what I post. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, the algorithm's insane, and live music is is where it's at, really. I think right now, and I know myself. Yes. I did twenty one days of festivals this year because I actually go cover festivals also. So I was out cool. every possible like, beat, and I actually got to hang out with Corey Marks at Boots and Hearts this year. I wanted to go so bad. I wanted to go to Boots and Hearts, especially was, because we're going to be there. But was it yeah. sick? Oh, it, it was. It was a big one this year for sure. Maybe next time. I'll have yeah. to catch him next time. <laughs> and and yeah, I actually have a really cool picture of him. He's just one of the poses he was doing on the big stage. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, he's a ham, you know, like he he loves to move around. He loves to like, but he actually plays and, and sings and does the whole thing. So, I mean, it's it would have been fun to see him perform live. Um, I know that even just, you know, the vibe with the music video thing, us performing together was, was really cool. Um, but like, you know, I, it's so weird to try to catch friends when you also have your own like travel schedule and things mm -hmm. like that. So everybody's busy crossing paths, but um, hopefully we will actually be for the first time performing in Canada on this run. So, uh, you know, they've always been neighbors, right? Cause we're here in Detroit, but yeah. um, we've never really gotten to, to play over in Canada just yet. We've been out with Canadian bands, um, but we've never been able to come over there and play. So this will be our first time on the Bush tour getting to play in Canada. Yeah, I, I'm not near the date, sadly, but I have a, a couple of my team members. I'm going to see if I can actually get sent out to cover the show. Yeah, people, wonderful. We would, I would love to. I would love that because, um, you know, I've, I've heard Canada goes hard for rock and roll. So I want to come and see what it's about over there. <laughs> we've, they certainly we've got some Europe. Yeah, we've got some some cool stateside fans, got some European fans, but this will be my first time for 
first uh, seeing what the scene is like over there in Canada. So I'm excited. And you have a couple of the uh, really nice areas for that too. I can't remember specifics, but I know I saw some of the names and those fans go pretty good. Yeah. Can't mm -hmm. wait. I'm gonna wait. So now, you know, now that we're talking about tour, what's, what's it like getting a tour with Bush or would like I the mean, idea of it? Yeah. Well, first of all, it was really crazy. Cause I, if I was telling you that um, some of my guys are all like nineties grunge era, sort of mm -hmm. very, right. I think glycerin was like one of the first songs that my bass player and my uh, rhythm guitar player learned to play <laughs> to, like together, like yeah. as kids. Right. So this is pretty full circle moment for all of us. Um, and the first interaction that we've had was at incarceration okay. i think we opened the same stage that they headlined so um that was pretty dope and uh i just you know seeing gavin perform and like those guys have have had such an amazing career an insane career um they just still look like they love it and i yeah. can't wait to see if that's the case right like it's still um pretty fascinating to to me to see those guys i mean they've been around since I don't know, 93, 90, something, something like, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a long time ago. Right. And yet here they are still, um, creating new music, uh, which is, which is resonating with people and, and, but like playing all the hits too. I love people who are self-aware enough to know that they still need to play the hits, right? <laughs> yep. Like when they come out and they're still right. Like you can't skip that. Like you can't, ah, you just, mm -hmm. you just, you don't do that to your fans. Right. Especially me. Cause I'm always the one side stage losing my mind. Um, Skillet can confirm actually when we were on their tour, <laughs> I was like side stage every night. They're like, do you ever run out of energy? And I'm like, not when I'm at the rock show, like, yeah. that's not, you know, I just, I love, I love it so much. And it's, um, it's, it's, I think where I refill my energy actually. Um, so I can't wait to see if that's the case with Bush on this tour and, um, bad wolves. I've gotten a chance to, to chat just on a couple of different like podcast things and round table things with Doc Coil. Um, and we were on the Nothing More tour and uh, and he came by because he's good friends with those guys. And so we just have said hello along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be fun to actually get to like work and play together now. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very, a very interesting tour with the three of you guys on there. Bush was here this summer in Ottawa with us and it's just fun. It's fun watching him do what they do. Just, you can't com yeah. complain for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll know half the songs, that's for sure. And the other half are like, everybody's going to be talking about. So it's it's a great show. It seems like they really, like I said, um, just that, that like, that energy, that smile, that swagger on stage, like you can tell when somebody's still having a great time. So mm -hmm. I hope that's the case with them. And um, hopefully that'll be the the same space that we get to to perform to their crowd is pretty, pretty intense, pretty fascinating. So mm -hmm. um, we always like to be the opener that's surprisingly kicking things out of the gate with like heavy energy right so um i hope that that translates also we'll see how their crowd responds that was actually going to be my next question what what, do you, what are we expecting for you on tour so oh. <laughs> we love playing live so like don't don't come to the show and think you're going to sleep through the opener if it's me because mm -hmm. we are jumping around and it's controlled chaos slightly controlled chaos because our our rhythm guitar player is like a bull in a china shop you get him up there with any kind of stage room he's all over the map okay um and so we just because we just genuinely love playing live and people can feel it that we've gotten a lot of feedback about that so we enjoy um that people notice right i'll go out there i got light up shoes we i'll, I'll jump off of the freaking drum riser whatever it is you know we just we we're excited to play big stages because um it's like more room to run around. I love club shows because club mm -hmm. shows are like super high energy and very up close. Right. Um, and then we get to get off stage and basically go hang out with everybody. Right. Yeah. Which can't always for safety reasons happen that way at larger scale shows. Um, but the one thing that you do get with large scale shows is massive amounts of energy. Right. Cause yeah. if, if there are a couple thousand people in the building and you got a bunch of stage room to run around, you can, you can put on a great show. Yeah, and it's it's an exciting time too. So, but I'm really hoping I can get my guy out to to cover because I think it'll be a fun one to see. Very cool. Very cool. Now, outside of music, because there's so much craziness and everything happening there, what do you do to yourself grounded and kind of centered in life? Honestly, it's funny. I I think 
I write music. I spend a lot of time with family too. Like where I live is actually like where I'm from. So I have a lot of access to all of my people when I'm Mm -hmm. home, Um, which I think can't be understated. I mean, I I still get to go. I got to go trick or treating with my niece this year. You know what I mean? So it's like that kind of stuff that really fills me back up um, when I'm home. But I also think music is my therapy. So when I go through stuff, I I go to lyrics. That's that's what I do. Um, so I write about my stuff and uh, turn it into Eva Under Fire songs. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely think that it's it's cool to um, you know spend time with my people when I'm back home. And um, I also read a lot, which is like just free Kindle app, smutty stuff. Like don't think that I'm a brainiac. <laughs> like it's really just like vampire books and like stuff mm-hmm. that you just take your brain out, right? Yeah, um, super girly. But it's, you know, when you can unplug like that, you know, I, I think it's, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to just like enjoy sitting in a comfortable space with your cozy slippers on and a stupid book to read. That's probably the fifth iteration of the same vampire story that I've read, but who cares? Right. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And I like it. So that's what yeah, I do to unwind with both. My, my wife loves reading, but I keep on saying that people like, don't know how to read because I can't sit and read a book. I can't, it's, it's not in me. So now for me, it's all just work and getting out to shows and stuff. I don't have a grounding moment as much these days. Mm, Yeah. I wonder if it's like when you're at the show, though, if that's like the recharge point, right? Is there moments where you can just take it all in? Oh, 100 percent. So I'm actually partnered with one of the booking agents, too. So when I go help out at shows there, I don't have to do anything. I can I know what's going on and I just I'm there. It's something to not have to think that's yeah. my moment yeah wonderful well then so so you're you're utilizing that as kind of your your recharge so i think that counts it, that counts but then i also have a, a now one-year-old who takes all that energy away <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're gonna need lots more sleep huh <laughs> i i only sleep four hours a day on on the average day anyways oh, so mm-hmm. i would i would literally physically not be able to do your job my friend so good for you <laughs> you I are mean, uh, dad mode and working and the whole nine. So good for you. Yeah. I, I spend like an hour and a half with my niece and that's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're busy. <laughs> Little ones are busy. Well, and, and so mine literally turned one today, like it's her birthday. So she's been cruising around just screaming and making sounds and playing with toys all day long. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday. little one! <laughs> that's so awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's been fun. I, sh- I shared that data today too, which kind of just made my my ear oh wonderful good for you what are you doing talking to me go hang out with her she seems way cooler <laughs> oh she's, she'll be fine but yeah I, I gotta yeah. i gotta do what i gotta do still yeah yeah well thank i appreciate your patience and, and for having mm-hmm. me on but like that sounds great that's well, I'm good for you I'm it so keeps happy me busy you. for sure yeah yeah for sure so I always like to ask uh, people I interview some fun questions at the end and they're kind of, you know, fun ones or thinkers and gets more into how you think about things. Interesting. All right, let's try this. First one is what is something on your go-to playlist that people wouldn't expect you listen to? Like a guilty Cardi pleasure. B. Cardi B? Cardi okay. B. <laughs> I I come from a ratchet high school. I can't help it. People are like, hey, uh, your Lincoln Park is showing, so like tone it down. <laughs> I don't, you know, that's what it is. Hey, hey, Cardi B's great too. I, I have her on some of my stuff. And my go-to, I always, if I ever want that that playlist song that nobody thinks they listen to is Nicki Minaj and Super Bass. So, yeah, that's a good one. Exactly. And it's just it gets you kind of that feeling of like, yeah, okay, now we're having fun with this. Yeah, exactly. Like I got, you know, if there's ever like a, like a deflated moment, like listen to some hip hop, cause it'll build you up and be like, oh yeah, I am, I am that one today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm a hip hop head myself. Like my backgrounds on my computers are like Snoop Dogg and MGK on the other side right now. Makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. <laughs> now this one's more of a thinker. What's one thing you think should be asked more in an interview that's not asked enough? Oh, sorry. What uh, you I broke up again? Uh, what's one thing that I think should be asked more in in what context? In therapy? In an interview. Oh, in an interview. Yeah. Um, so in in like this scenario. This one is a thinker. Hmm. 
You know, I like when people ask more about the behind the scenes story of the music, right? Because I'm a lyricist. So I think uh, maybe if people ask more detailed questions about like the story behind it, um, I think they would be surprised at what people would share about like where they got that idea from. Because sometimes it's so left field and other times it's like a really personal lyrics would be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the story is always a great piece to learn about something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My wife just turned on the light inside. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for the, we're in a, a basement apartment, and the way the electrician did everything. So I have like in my office, I have light for the bedroom in my office. So she has to reach in every time to turn it on. It's extra annoying. <laughs> so that's like the mystery hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's like, Whoop. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, funny. <laughs> okay. Next question is: What do you hope people take away from your music? I want them to feel heard. I want them to feel like, you know, they are maybe um, some of it's meant to be inspirational. I hope that people would would use that to build themselves up. But I also some of the darker stuff, I, I want people to know that, like, we all have some kind of, you know, thing we've been through. Right. So I want I want people to feel heard. I want people to, to relate to it because because I think that, you know, that validation is healing. So I want people to know that they we get it mm -hmm. and and that's a nice one too connecting with people through music is always the the goal i would think yeah yep i don't it's less about um maybe what i need to well i don't want to say it's less about what i need to say because it's definitely about my own stuff right but i've learned that because i say what's on my heart through my music a lot of a lot of people hear that and know that it's okay for them to say what is whatever is on their heart and i like that i like mm -hmm. that like oh. that, that component is, is the eventual goal, right? It's like, not just to be honest about what I'm saying and why I'm saying it because it's stuff that I've experienced, but that someone else will take that and use their voice too. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. No, that's a great goal. Now, last fun one I have is who played each band member in the biopic of, of the band? Who played each band member in the, in the biopic of the band? Like what? who who does you guys justice if you were guys it, like like Motley Crue the Dirt who does you guys justice in your movie? I don't. Hmm. If if somebody were to play me that wasn't me in my own film, maybe it's Pink. Okay. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe it's some, I don't know what, a little other band. It could be Might band be. or it could be just if you think something fits you or fits, you know, the guitarist in a certain way. Yeah. It would definitely be a cartoon of some kind. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's the Looney Tunes. Each one of us. <laughs> if, if, if it was, it would definitely be a cartoon character. I can tell you that. That would um, be fun, I don't know actually, they I would, think. Yeah, I don't know if they would be separate, like from separate, you know, things or whatever. Like, uh, like I'm. <laughs> have you seen that movie Ice Age? Yeah. Okay, my mom always thought that I was like Scrat because I was like <laughs> very, you know, I'm always just like flitting, flitting to every other, you know, and I'm very chaotic with the things that I do. And my bandmates all like laugh at me when when stuff like that happens. But then there's also like really other funny characters from different other animated series that I think would all play them very well. So I, I have to think I'm more on that, but it would definitely be a cartoon character um, in, of some kind. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> that'd be an intro one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it'd be people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know who could, who could play Chris. <laughs> that mm -hmm. guy would have to be, like I said, bull in the China shop. Um, we can actually yeah, make it a bull. There's bull characters and, cartoons exactly. out there so exactly that yeah. would be yeah it would be a bull in pajamas that would be it <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right last last important question i have what motivates you guys to keep pushing forward with the band and with music and just kind of what you're doing you're gonna laugh <laughs> fight <laughs> fight okay I we've like all that been answer. through too much at this point i am not losing this game <laughs> We, we will take this world by storm forcibly or otherwise, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's definitely a little bit of spite for sure. We've been through the pandemic stuff. We've been through 
I mean, there's so many challenges, right? We we genuinely love playing live. So I think that that being the ultimate goal, everything else just feels like sometimes it it gets convoluted or too complicated or stands in the way, right? And so, but eventually to get to our goal, all we got to do is weather all of those storms. So eventually we just sort of build thick skin and let people know we're here to stay. Like, you, you know, we'll figure it out. Uh, we just want to play the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I really vibe with that answer because that's kind of how Hidden Beats is still around. It, we're, I'm go. looking at 10 years in February for this and the only reason it's still here is because I'm just not letting it die. Yeah. Right. It's just because I refuse to give yeah. up. How's that? <laughs> I think that this is as good of an answer as any, right? Uh, yeah, it's definitely so not some sort of like, yeah, right. This is not, well, and it's, it's, it's always about, you know, to the, there's the helping people component and there's the other, you know, uh, building connections with others and stuff like that. But truthfully under all of it, it's spite. I think I think we're we're connecting that way. I I really appreciate that answer. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, funny. So that's all the all, that's all the fun I have written down. Is there any final words of wisdom or tidbits you'd like to leave to people? I guess just I'll see you out there. You know, like I said, my favorite thing is the live show. So I hope all y'all show up because we <laughs> can't have a live show without a bunch of rockers listening to uh, what we do up there. But I promise you, it'll be fun. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come out to the show. Have a good time. Ah, now it's, are we back? I don't know. Can I hear you? It lagged for a minute. Nope. I can't hear you anymore. Hmm. Nope. Nope. Like we said, we just do this out of spite, right? <laughs> Dang, technical difficulties. Nope, still can't hear you. Well, if you're if you're done with me, anyhow, I can just always be like, much love, thank you. But <laughs> I don't know if I can still hear you. How about now? Ah, oh, okay. where we did? <laughs> I got to get a new a new new terminal here. This thing's insane. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I was just I'm telling you what, man. Everything stands in our way. We just keep it moving. You know? yeah. <laughs> I, I was able to hear you the whole time too, and I'm sitting here going, "God damn it, God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> son of a biscuit! Yeah. Why won't it work?" Yeah, I get you. I hear you. We do that on stage actually all the time. There was mm -hmm. one time we were playing with our like the, the we had like a new cat temper setting or whatever and we started the song and we started it off key like three times it was supposed to be that setting for that key should not have had problems i could not figure it out we just skipped the song and then you know what happened after the show turn off the stupid kemper turn it back on works fine that's how it always is it's <laughs> it's annoying that way so cheers to you we'll just keep doing it out of spite <laughs> yeah and it's it's good thing we're at the end because who knows if this thing's gonna keep going at this point. Right. Yeah, she's uh, she's had enough of me apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was really nice getting to to meet you and learn more about you and the band, and I'm excited to see all the new stuff that's coming up, and I'm waiting for that album. Too now. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, and uh, for having me. And take good care. We'll see you on the other side, man. I'll be here.